Hello, uh, everyone. Uh, welcome back to the channel and to what I believe this is our first like movie review. Wow. Wait, we're not I doing Doctor Who. We've done this. No, unfortunately not. I know. I, I was dressed, dressed for Doctor Who. I was dressed for Jada Set the TARDIS. What is this bullshit? Ooh, sorry. I'm afraid um, we're going to be discussing Barbie, the, 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 the film that is sweeping, sweeping the internet and sweeping the box office at the minute. That is not featuring a big atom bomb. Um, that's the other one yeah. that's part of Barbie. Oh, <laughs> Ryan Gosling, honey. Hey, that's why I didn't talk about bombs, just an atom bomb, you know? <laughs> Something exploded and that's in enough. <laughs> I had I to watching Oppenheimer. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yes, we are discussing uh, Barbie. So both of us have uh, been to see the film. Uh, I went on opening day in Lima today. <laughs> so, I've just read we're dressed as Barbie in Oppenheimer. <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> oh, we yeah, done it. We did the we've meme we've even meme. been to. Oh, are so unintentional. I have seen both, so There's I'm, a I'm okay. and I can't uh, read. Uh, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> terrible. This is terrible. This has been poorly planned, but I do not have a pink shirt, so I didn't until 3 p.m. today. You have you have committed to this, and I appreciate the commitment to the bit, um, and I love it. Uh, Yes, so Barbie, it, it came out on Friday. Um, we've both seen it now. Um, it stars Margot Robbie as Barbie and Ryan Gosling as Ken. Specifically, um, she's stereotypical Barbie and he's Beach Ken. Beach Ken, yeah. Beach, uh, nothing else. Beach. Beach, he does Beach. He does not a lifeguard. Beach. Um, it also stars Will Ferrell, who plays the uh, CEO of Mattel. Um, as well as a, a various other members of the cast, including uh, Michael Cera as Alan, who's great. Everyone loves Alan. Um, uh, other Kens include uh, future 15th Doctor Shutagawa and um, Simu Liu, who is uh, Shang-Chi in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and also in the MCU is Kingsley ben who also plays a Ken. Um, and not to mention the best Ken of them all, Rob Brydon. <laughs> that was such a surprise. I, 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 <laughs> I did know. the biggest double take. Yeah, yeah. It was it was an incredible reveal to have him in there. And I was so lucky because he tweeted about it. He tweeted he was at the UK premiere and he tweeted that he'd been there. Did I hadn't seen oh, it. So it, I only saw that afterwards. I was like, oh my God, that, that's that hilarious. Was the best reveal. That um, was the biggest surprise of the entire film. <laughs> was the best moment of the whole film was Rob Ryden playing Sugar Daddy Ken. I like uh, to think it, in different places in the world that's a different person playing that particular Ken. Oh, could you imagine? Like region exclusive. That would be people. great. <laughs> nah, they wouldn't have the budget for that. That's too much money. They'd have to pay we more really, actors and, there. And we'd have gotten so. the best one anyway, so they might as well just keep it. Well, yeah, just exactly. Um, but yes, this will follow the same format as our, our episode, Doctor Who episode reviews, uh, where we'll do three positives and three negatives. Uh, but first of all, overall, what, what did you think of the film? How, how was your experience with Barbie? I liked it. Mm -hmm. I wanted to love it so badly, mm -hmm. but I liked it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I do think I may have slightly gotten on board with the hype train a lot and the marketing a mm -hmm. bit much, and maybe, mm -hmm. you know, that was like oh okay it, it's this okay that's fine mm -hmm. um and also just my screening was the worst um no one was laughing except me i was like you miserable fucks um <laughs> and then we just had an awful group of youths in the middle um mm -hmm. who left that row in a complete mess um and they were talking all the way through it they were talking through all the emotional moments I was like Shut up. um so that didn't help and um, it's always going to mm. kind of taint an experience a bit. So I do think I need to go and watch it again, get a proper view of it, um, especially because I'll know what to expect going in now. I probably would enjoy it more. Um, mm. But I still liked it enough. Um, and there were a few nice surprises in there. Some things I was kind of expecting it to be for better or worse, I guess. Um, mm. But we can kind of get into that. I kind of everything I thought I would love about it, I did. Um, and then maybe there were some things I was like, oh, I, I like that more than I thought I would. Or I was mm -hmm. like, I wasn't expecting this and I'm not sure I wanted this. Um, I mean, it's kind of the case of every film you see, really. But um, yeah, I am fully on board with it. It was a good time. Um, I can see it 
perfectly hitting the mark for so, so, so many people, um, mm. which may not necessarily be me, but I think there is um, a lot to enjoy for all ages. Um, you know, it's a surprisingly mature Barbie movie, which you might not think, mm-hmm. um, you know, if you're not, I guess, in the film circle and know like Greta Gerwig and her work and stuff, you probably would have expected maybe a very different Barbie film to what you then sit down and watch. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I did watch it with my mum and she went, it's a very adult film for a, a Barbie movie, wasn't it? Said, yes. Yeah. Um, and some people are going to expect that going into it, like I was, some people may not. So that's obviously going to influence your opinion as well. But I did have a good time with it, obviously, because I I, I still kept all this pink on to record this review because <laughs> I knew that was happening. So yeah, nice. it was a good film. It was a good time. And um, I do intend on watching it again to get a proper solid view of how I feel about it. Um, mm. But yeah, I, I would say the sum of the whole was like yeah it's fine but some individual parts of it in particular i thought were outstanding yeah i think that's a a fair point Uh, i did really like it but i think that might have helped because again i saw it on on friday and i mainly saw it for the for the barbenheimer meme uh so leading up i was like oh oppenheimer looks good and barbie also looks okay i'm gonna go see that but then the closer i got on the more i was like "Hmm." the more sort of interviews I saw with with Ryan Gosling and Margot Robbie I was like okay I'm, I'm more on board um but I wasn't like swept in the whole hype of it mm. I think I was quite tempered which is maybe why I was a bit more like this is I don't know what I'm watching but I'm loving every minute of it yeah I think that's probably more of what what my reaction was um you know which is just it, it depends on what you consume it depends on it's you know the pros and cons of marketing a movie is mm. that you can get people that see one trailer and go, right, that's fine. I don't want to see anything else. I'll probably go see it. And then you get others that consume so many that of is, the trailers. That is that one thing trailers. I really liked, is that the very first like teaser for Barb is just the opening bit of the mm. film. I did really yeah. like that. I was yeah. like, oh, what, what more could there be now that the opening with this? <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, you see it with, you know, with a lot of the Marvel stuff um, in the past, I'd be like watching all the trailers, watching all the clips, like, oh, what could this be? What could this be? And sort of now I'm more like, yeah, I know what's coming. I'm going to go see it. And then I try not to focus on it too much. It, but... it, it's funny how my relationship with the MCU has gone now because I'm more tempted to watch Suit Invasion because I'm like, oh, well, the Ken's is in that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. I want to see uh, the Ken's yeah, be a baddie. Fair enough. Yeah, that's a fair point. That ha- it has made me go, oh, maybe I should finish Secret Invasion and be like, oh, he's in it. So that'd be interesting. Um, but yeah, I, I really liked it. Um, and luckily, my screening, although busy, it wasn't, it doesn't sound like it was as bad as yours. Um, which, you yeah, know, I've again, never had anything that bad, but I think I did get a bit unlucky, which is also kind of. Yeah, because I'm, I'm, I'm the same, I think, with the, uh, the first Suicide Squad, because I had a bad cinema experience with that one. And I think oh, really? that right. impacted my thoughts on the film in general um but anyway barbie so we'll do our positives first Come um, on, barbie. let's go party uh i'll uh, i'll kick us off um we may overlap on some of these we may not uh okay. my first one is ryan gosling i'm not surprised <laughs> uh i i mean you know i'm w- Barbie is the title character, and we'll come on to Margot Robbie very shortly. Oh, yeah, it's time um, to cancel you for putting for, for, the man for, on the putting, pedestal. For putting the one man before in. any of the women. Yeah. I know, I know. And I feel I feel bad, but they should not have give him, given him the best scenes. And, <laughs> I don't it's know, their you know. fault. It's yeah, this yeah. woman's fault. Um, <laughs> I, I, think, I think it's great. I think he's, in his scenes, he, he really he steals all the scenes he's in. I think, you know, I was... Um, it probably does play into effect where this this film can be seen uh, from a male audience and a female audience. For the female audience, you're going to relate more to Barbie and her experience. For the male audience, you're probably going to relate more to Ken and what he goes through and how his his journey is shaped in this. Um, I should also say up front, we're, we're going to be talking about spoilers. We're probably not going to be non-spoiler stuff. So if you do want to watch this spoiler free, then come back later. Um, but yeah, I think he, you know, from him being this person that's just his only sole purpose is Barbie to then discovering this way that he can be, he can try and show that he's more, more man, you know, that he's, he should be what Barbie wants to then him realizing that actually he is enough for himself. He can just be Ken. He doesn't have to be, yeah, he doesn't have to be just Barbie's sort of thing on the side that, that occasionally he'll go and see, you know, and I think there's a, a healthy message in there that, 
for men you don't have to be this big uh you know thing that that society says you need to be you don't need to be all powerful and have lots of money and be you know it helps that ken is this ken at least is you know the stereotypical ken so to speak but it, he accepts that he doesn't need to do that to impress anyone it's up to him if he wants that um and I think that's a really healthy message to send to boys and men in the audience. It's a shame that some of the men that have seen this film don't see that message and can't accept that they can't look past yeah. the female side of this story. If you ultimately um, think like, oh, they villainized Ken and like made him the baddie, like you, you missed the last yeah. twenty minutes there. <laughs> but pal, that's yeah, a new story. yeah. If if they stopped, if they stopped and Ken didn't have his, I'm just Ken, like. Moment. If this was like Barbie Dead Reckoning Part One, and they stopped it there, yes. where they come back to <laughs> yeah. Barbie Land, and it's. Ken Land or whatever. That it's Ken's it. Redemption. Kendom. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, there's if if they stopped it and they made him the villain, then fine. But he's he's not really the villain. The villain is him being the villain is society. So society. It's, him. Yeah. it's you know, it's it's how he was corrupted by that in just a few minutes of coming out of, of the void uh into the real world. I love um, how quick it happened. Like it's so true. I know, I know. <laughs> he saw some horses and that was it. He was gone. Yeah. <laughs> but um yeah, I think, and Ryan Gosling's performance in it is just, I think, you know, I've always believed he's a good comedic actor. I think after yeah. The Nice Guys. Um, he's great in The Nice Guys. I, you know, I've always believed that he should be doing, yeah, he should be doing more comedies. Um, I love him in La La Land. Um, so obviously this is like a merge of sort of the two. Um, and yeah, he's he's great. And he does delivers an amazing performance both before he realises he's Kenneth and after he realises he's Kenneth. Um, he, both the songs he sings um are great i've had them on repeat almost ever since i've come out the film nice. um and yeah I, I i i think for me he would be an oscar nomination for i think i would assume best supporting actor um unless yeah. he's considered a co-star unless they want to put him in for best actor um i think he would definitely be nominated because he does definitely deserve a recognition i think for for this role and for the sort of recognition you know yeah the recognition yeah for this uh for his for his you know his kenness and the way he oh my god they should have called it like the reckoning reckoning oh reckoning reckoning maybe maybe part two yeah uh barbie two will be will be ken um yeah so uh what's your first positive uh my first positive is margot robbie nice she is my second positive (laughs) yeah she is so good in this um Mm. You know, right from the off. I mean, it's kind of just perfect casting when as soon as you think about like Margot Robbie is Barbie. Oh yeah, makes sense. She's hot. Yeah. Um, you know, she is like what you might imagine. She Barbie is the to be. stereotypical Barbie. Yeah. It's what girls picture Barbie looking like. It's what boys picture Barbie looking like. Yeah. Let's yeah. be honest. Um mm-hmm. so you know, as soon as that she was like cast in it, I was like, okay, yes, they've nailed that already. You know, just after a flying mm-hmm. start. Um and then obviously the film itself lends a lot more depth than this could have such so easily been like a cash in movie and probably still done really well. Um, but you know, there is like a depth of meaning and you know, a lot of empowerment to it. Um, and a lot of that comes from the script, but I also think Margaret's performance um brings a lot of that. To, you know, I didn't think of Harley Quinn once watching this, um, which is always no. a test of a good actor when they have like a part that I personally is like a big DC fan, so succinctly mm-hmm. links her to and sees her as all the time um to not even consider that once in this and it's another iconic kind of character in a way of barbie um Mm -hmm. i think that's testament to her and you know as particularly when she then arrives in the real world and she kind of sees like oh this isn't anything you might have thought of and Mm -hmm. when you know the little girl kind of says it how it is and her reaction Mm -hmm. to that just seeing her kind of lose her way a bit and not you know lose everything kind of give up have the existential crisis big mood barbie was a huge mood in this movie the first Um, existential crisis of, yes of a few yeah. i love a relatable character who goes through many <laughs> existential crises um she's just phenomenal with that and that scene where she's like you know i'm, I'm not good enough for anything to do anything um yeah. she's phenomenal in that um and yeah i just i want to give her a hug whenever barbie cried it's like it's okay mm-hmm. it'll be okay no cry don't cry um yeah she was phenomenal i knew she would be but you know i i think it's the perfect casting with an amazing script that kind of elevates um, mm-hmm. Barbie. And the whole idea of that, you know, I think people who had Barbies growing up would have, I guess, projected their own personality onto a Barbie. So I guess 
having to give like a stereotypical summarization of all of that in a film is going to be hard to do anyway but I think they really did capture that well and I think Margot um is a great representation of that of being in the stereotypical Barbie but also not in a way because she's kind of finding that mm -hmm. she can be whatever she wants and I, I love her arc through the entire film and you know particularly the ending which I will come on to a bit later um mm -hmm. so yeah Margot was incredible um you know the worthy Barbie of the title itself yeah I think that's fair enough and she is another one where I think uh, a best actor nomination should be going her way um if not at the minute a best actor win uh, or actress win um in in february i think march the oscars are so, so it's a while away yet so somebody could steal the show you know we've not seen seen zendaya in dune yet so it's true you never know. seen core um, patrol yet no it's true we've we've not seen uh i don't know what the film's coming out um the marvels yeah, one of the Marvels. I don't think they'll be getting any best. Well, because it might, might be good, but I don't think they'll get best actress. Do not make me choose between Margot and Brie, please. I can't do it. I just can't do oh, it. It's impossible. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I completely agree. She's she's great in this. She, you know, again, the arc is, as I mentioned, there's two arcs for both characters in here. I think it does resonate more if you're female and you know this because you you see what she's going through, especially when they come straight to the real world, and you immediately understand her feelings and how why she's feeling a bit you know uh, at it unease and some of those are uh, some of those are paid for jokes but even as a, a male in the audience you can recognize that yeah all right as a woman coming straight into that world you're gonna feel slightly threatened um because it's that's the whole point of the film is to point out that hey maybe women aren't safe in 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 the world at the minute and maybe people should have a look at that um yeah and yeah, she plays a great a great role in sort of delivering that message and sort of having the message of, you know, this is this is what society says you to be, but you can be whatever you want. You just need to accept it for yourself and hope that others accept you for it. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's great. And you see that in the end of the film when she she does get accepted for being sort of a, a stereotypical person. She goes and lives in the real world and she sort of finds her place. Um with with the family of the secretary of the CEO of Mattel, I guess. Something like that, yeah. The, the Duolingo dad. Um, <laughs> yeah, Duolingo dad. Um, yeah, I, I, she is great. I think, yeah, there's there's not too much I can really add to it. Both both main main roles in this film, I think, have been excellently cast. Um, and I really hope they get some recognition for this. Um, and I'm, I'm, you know, maybe they, I'll have my fingers crossed. If I was a betting man, I would put my bets on them now. To be nominated for for the Oscars next year, um, so that was Margot's my second positive. So I can't really add much more. So what's your uh, second positive? Uh, three words. I'm just Ken. Yes, that's one of my additional ones. Yeah, uh, that entire song and dance sequence <sighs> yeah. was mm -hmm. such a huge surprise. Um, yeah. I remember that shot of Simu Liu, like when he's doing that, like yeah. dancing. Like, I remember yeah. that from like the second trailer or something. Little did yeah. I know what <laughs> iconic sequence yeah. that was going to be part yeah. of mm -hmm. um and yeah uh, again i think it was a big surprise that something like that came as late in the film as it did for me mm -hmm. um i mean i wasn't necessarily expecting ken to become obsessed with patriarchy and overthrow barbie land and everything <laughs> yeah. so you yeah, know yeah. that was all a big surprise i guess but mm -hmm. then their plan to like get the kens to turn against each other and then that whole sequence is just so good. Where they're fighting so on well. the beach and they're all like just yeah. whatever. So well Especially choreographed, with... so well directed. Yeah. It's like, it reminded me a lot of the um, Kingsman fight in the church that Colin mm -hmm. Firth did. Uh, mm -hmm. Obviously, maybe not as bloody and chaotic as that. <laughs> yes, gory. But yeah. um, certainly more musical, which I think mm. gives it more power. Um, yeah. And yeah, all of that was just so well done. And mm. um, I, I think we talked about it before we started recording that I hadn't listened to I'm Just Ken before no, I watched the no. film because I, I wanted to kind of experience it for the first time. And boy, did I experience it. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it all yeah. came together so brilliantly. Um, I love that it's just, you know, Ken's kind of just falling into the Barbie's trap for them and they're all turning mm -hmm. against each other, and like the two rival armies of Ken's. Um, it was just a really cool kind of visual spectacle. I'd love to rewatch that kind of in slow motion and see everything that's mm -hmm. going on in the background. I like see all, mm -hmm. the, what, all the different moves, because even just some of the stuff that, you know, 
um, Beach Ken was doing when he just grabs that guy and then just gives him a noogie and it's like ah, <laughs> it's just <laughs> yeah, so yeah. good. Because yeah. um, he's got like the really thing, have, he like stabs like, him weapons. and he stabs yeah. him through the, through the, under the and Then you have stuff. like Will Ferrell and all those guys being like, what is going on here? And, the and when, like, one of them gets one of those like gets shot. It's like well, are the yeah. guns in here. No, the guy down, from uh, <laughs> Staffless Flats just gets shot. Yeah. He's like, oh. The guy from Flea Black with the. <laughs> The only one, the only one that's actually that's actually injured in that in that scene is, is him. <laughs> yeah. Nobody else. A human, yeah. Um, <laughs> so all of that was great as well. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it's kind of kind of the climax of the film in a way. Um, certainly in terms of like the big power ballad song, um, and it's utterly bonkers and utterly ridiculous. Mm-hmm. But every single person involved gives it one hundred and twenty-five gazillion percent, and that's why mm-hmm. it works so well. And it, it's just so bizarre and I, I think that's the kind of barbie quirkiness i think i wanted more of mm-hmm. um and i guess we'll talk about that a bit later on but yeah when it hits it hits and that was the sequence for me i was like this is amazing i could watch yeah. 20 minutes of just this song or give me all the reprises um it was so well put together so well staged um, you know obviously a great vocal performance from Ryan Gosling as well. I look forward to just listening to it in my own time now um, Mm because people have certainly been doing that based on the Spotify numbers. So enjoy those $12 that that's gotten you, Ryan. Um, (laughs) And yeah, yeah, it it was, I think from the speech that America Forever gives leading into the Angus Just Ken sequence, that was definitely my Mm -hmm. favourite kind of portion of the film by far. Mm -hmm. Um, So for it to kind of and end with the whole I'm just Ken sequence was show stopping, iconic. I can't wait to, you know, rewatch that a million times mm-hmm. over and over. That's going to be a great drinking game. Um, yes. Every time I say Ken and I'm yep. just Ken. Oh. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's just so fun mm-hmm. to kind of get a, a full glimpse of like all the Kens together like that. Because, um, you know, I guess that's kind of a negative that we'll talk about a bit later on. But I'm glad we could showcase like all the Kens. Mm-hmm together in that moment um, in just such a ridiculously stupid way um but then you know they kind of do pay that off later on with how they resolve everything with ken kind of realizing he's ken off um mm-hmm. so yeah it's an amazing sequence uh, an absolute bop it's that it's so well yeah. directed and choreographed and put together um yeah essays will be written on i'm just ken i'm sure and i look yeah. forward to reading them all it was yes. so good yeah definitely um and i mean it's it's especially you know incredible that it's it's as good as it is because it's effectively a joke in that you know oh we need to we need to fight the kens off each other and then it's just a joke as to oh yeah whoops they've done it but it's also again it, it sums up the the journey of the kens as well when he goes he can accept himself and then by the end he's like yes i'm enough for me we're all enough we don't need to impress anyone and it goes through like three different like genre of, of song like it's a power ballad and then it's like um like pop and then it's like a synth type thing at the end with the with the uh, 80s sort of um fitness tape vibe yeah. um and it's in it, it in the film it stops you know it, it's cut up a little bit because they have the bit where they go to the beach and then they fight and whatever yeah. but listening to it as a whole song it, it works very well um and you know ryan gosling obviously can sing and um I was reading uh, Mark Ronson's interview with BBC uh, online. And he's the guy that like curated the soundtrack and sort of worked on it. And he said that they originally made it like, um, I think deeper so that Ryan Gosling can sing it. Every time he did it, like, oh, let's try, you know, get it back. And eventually they ended up back in the original key because he could sing it so well. Um, yeah. And yeah, it's, it's, it's great. I think all of it, the way they come together at the end and they're all like ha- holding each other's hands. I'm like, oh, guys. Yeah, that, that's oh. what I really liked about it. That's that yeah. actually brought them together while they were yeah. fighting. And then just that cut and it's like, weren't we supposed to vote today? And then he's just <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Like, oh, oh, that was today, whoopsie. wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. And they just cut saw the barbie's like, hooray, we did it. We saved yeah, the city. It's, 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 it's great. I lo- Again, it's, it's, it's a big joke, but it's a joke that it plays into lands. the plot so well. Yeah, it lands, it plays into the plot very well. It's a joke with a purpose, which is always a better joke anyway. Um, and it's a great song. Um, so yeah, it's I'm looking forward off. to when they when they eventually release the full version, probably in a few weeks from now, once once everyone's been to see it, they'll probably release it on YouTube or something. So I look forward to that. Um, my final sort of main positive uh, is the set production and costume design, uh, especially in Barbie Land. 
more yeah, so Barbie that's Land. My, that's my uh, bonus one is like the production of Barbie Land. Yes, it is. It's great. Um, you know, I think they ran out of pink paint. There was a pink they paint did. There's shortage, a shortage wasn't when there? they were when they were making this, which it, I can it shows see that why. Um, yeah. yeah, I I like the fact that they use like a, almost. I'm pretty sure it's just a toy of the White House for the White House when they mm. cut to it. Um, I like that none of the water's real. I like that they don't drink or eat anything. Um, <gasps> that was my favorite bit in the film. I think when she goes to drink and there's actually drinking it, she's like, <laughs> she's oh, oh, I'm, ex- I'm not used to there being yeah. anything in there. I completely forgot yeah. to expect it's, that. It, it, it's all great, and I think you know, it's it's Ryan Gosling running into the just the wave and just bouncing off of it. Yeah, and and uh, John Cena flies like, like coming it's someone the actually yeah. <laughs> throwing the doll. I didn't know John Cena was in it as well. That was a yeah. big surprise to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like this when they come up. Um, I think that's that's great. Um, the car where like where they're just going along in the car and there's the spaceship and all that. I think is great when the car flips. The car flips, lands. and then it does it again. I'm like, oh my god, there were two humans in it this time. <laughs> Are they gonna die? <laughs> but then, and then they land outside the car instead of in it. I think it's great. <laughs> um, I also really appreciate, um, and it's one of my favourite jokes, uh, which I don't know if it could play into it. But the when they're trying to escape back to the real world, the humans and and Alan is like, oh, and if as soon as those Kens know how to build lengthwise instead of vertical, that was so good. <laughs> it's just like a big pile of bricks. As soon like, as they oh, learn what? how to build sideways. No one's ever getting in or out. I really, I really like that. That's a great joke. But then even that, even that has production value to it because they still made that big stack of bricks and they've got all that. Um, and just the the way it's all done, you know. And for this film to be, you know, what it's around hundred and twenty odd million, I think it was. It's not like a big budget. Um, so for it to look as good as it as it does, and you know, the costumes are great as well. Mm. Um, throughout, not even just for Ken and Barbie, you know, they make sure that the costumes for every Ken and every Barbie has a purpose and, and has a point to prove um and you know it's they, they did an amazing thing with that and i think that one will also is likely i think to win best like production at the oscars that if feels that one like doesn't, showing, doesn't it? yeah yeah um so yeah i just i can't you know praise it enough when you get to the real world you know it's a bit more like oh you can't really you can't really be that fantastical with yeah. the real world stuff but that's i guess that's the point in a way yeah, but all the it's stuff. It's just all these land. white men in suits. Yes, literally. Um, Ooh. And so, it's all great. The, the the like the 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 pastel like you know watercolored backgrounds that they've all got. Um, the houses, the little cul-de-sac they're all in. It's all great, and uh, I re- I really like it, and I really like that they they could have just so easily not have bothered with any of that. They could have made it just so. They could have faked it all. They could have done it on blue screen. You know, they didn't have to do things like that. And the fact that they do, I think, really, yeah. really shows the impact on this. Film. It is, really it is it like they're literally just making the products, but just yes, bigger in like a massive scale, which is so yeah, cool. yeah, and it really works. Um, so yeah, what's your uh, final main positive? Uh, my final main positive is the ending, mm-hmm. the whole ending sequence, I guess. Um, but particularly uh, Barbie like becoming human, um, all mm-hmm. of that, and. The reveal of like who this random old lady was halfway through the film, like mm. the fuck is this? Um, and then when I came back, I was like, oh, she's it's done for tax evasion. <laughs> <laughs> that was good, yeah. Um, I've seen that actress in something before. I can't. She's, think of what she it was. Is. She was the uh, mum in Matilda, is what I was. Ah, um, that's it. Yes, that's, that's it. What I found out. Today, um, yeah. so I, was like, I know her. But the original she was Matilda, not well. the new Netflix one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She had a really mm. great presence in her, you know, few little scenes. Um, but yeah, I, I love that. Uh, again, a, a very unexpected ending for Barbies, but I'm going to mm. be a human and go to my gynecologist, <laughs> which is yeah. the best final line in a movie ever, potentially. Yes, because um, it proves yeah, that she's human because that. when before before she was plastic, so she didn't have anything. Exactly. So now that she is human, she needs to go and get it checked. One of her first lines in the real world was to tell those men that she didn't have a vagina. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm. I have all the genitals. <laughs> I'm sure you do, oh. Ryan. Um, oh God, what a performance! <laughs> you're gonna be like years from now, you're just gonna be walking down the street and you're gonna stop it. Like, God, he was so good in Barbie. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll see a picture of him in like a really dramatic film and be like, Oh, God, Barbie, though, that was his best one. Yeah, come on, your... grandpa, let's get you back to bed. <laughs> your grandkids will be shuffling through your old records and they'll find I'm just Ken. <laughs> grandpa, what's Barbie. this? Kids, sit down, oh. <laughs> I've got a story to tell. Break out the old Blu-ray player. Let me let me find the disc. 
they're there with their hologram mm-hmm. Barbie. Now, back in my oh, yeah. day, you could <laughs> hold them. Um, but yeah, mm-hmm. what were we talking about? Oh yeah, the ending. Um, anyway, gynecologists. It's easy to get sidetracked by Ryan Gosling as Ken. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, the gynecologist. Uh, it, it was just. I don't know, it's such an unexpected, like, oh, wow, I never would have predicted a Barbie mm. movie to kind of end that way. Because um, you think it'd be, like, about embracing being Barbie. Barbie. And it is, yeah. but they kind of redefine who Barbie is, and that's kind mm. of the whole point, which is a great message and a very kind of Greta Gerwig thing of kind of exploring the human condition and all that. Mm. And as soon as it was playing out, I was like, this is the perfect way to end it as well. Um, mm. Because it's not like every single Barbie is like, yeah, we're all going to be human. You know, it was just her making mm. that decision. Um and after everything we've kind of seen her go through, um, I think it made a lot of sense that, you know, she'd want to kind of go there because, you know, I think when she's like, I don't even know if I am Barbie anymore. Um, I'm not sure I've ever believed a line more that's ever been spoken in film. I was like, mm-hmm. she's been through so much. She's gone through <laughs> such a journey. Mm-hmm. Um, so all of that was just so great. Um, and, you know, the Kens kind of realised and they were all Ken off. Um, mm-hmm. I like um, shooties Ken being like, I just miss my friend. I don't care if I'm Ken. That was yeah. great as well. And the fact that mm. his Barbie was like the two from State Education. Not yeah. That, they've got those two together. Yeah. Um, that's great. Probably because um, they were on set at the same time and the others weren't. <laughs> they were like, oh, yeah. you probably, yeah, you know. Yeah. They could go and do sex education and pop back in yeah. and again. Um, COVID bubbles. Um, mm. But yeah, it, it was all just so well done. And um had there not been screaming teenagers laughing over it, I think it would have been a very, very emotional ending. Um, yes. There's one line, what was it she said, the creator woman? It was like, mothers stand still so their kids can look back and see how far they've come. That's a fucking yeah. good line. I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, it, it gets very deep for this Barbie film. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I love it for it. Um, so, yeah, I just, I, I loved how they kind of wrapped up, particularly, you know, stereotypical Barbie's arc. Yeah. And the fact that stereotypical Barbie ended up being a human, everyone can be a stereotypical Barbie, which is a great Barbie to be. Um, so, mm-hmm. you know, they really, I think, hit the nail on the head with like what the film's trying to say. They really stick the landing with the ending and all those messages coming across. Um, you know, all the Kens are kind of redeemed if you feel they need to be redeemed. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, it ties it in a neat bow. I look forward to seeing what new barbie they'll probably get margot to play in the sequel um yeah so yeah it should be interesting but uh yeah i I loved how they kind of wrapped everything up as well i i think you know because i was like okay i'm enjoying it It, it's fine but i I was Mm -hmm. hoping this would really hit me and engage me because there were a few moments i just completely kind of like oh i I haven't been paying attention um Mm -hmm. but you know that whole ending sequence really really gripped me um, and would not let go and never will um, so yeah, I, I I loved how they kind of wrapped everything up. Yeah, I think that's fair enough. And my my pitch for the sequel is that um, Alan has taken over Barbie Land, and so Ken must come back to the real world to get Barbie, and they must stop Alan from yes from being Alan because he he you know I wouldn't He's say still... he had a he had, he was you know he had a a nice resolution. He was still kind of like oh yeah fuck off Alan. He just you know, he like, wasn't... I'm so happy. Are you? Alan? Are yeah. You? So I mean, this you're the only there, Alan ever. To... That's yeah, got, that's got to do something to someone. You can get in sync back in, so they can be like, "Alan, stop, come with us." He's going to try and turn yeah. everyone into an Alan, so he's not alone. Exactly. You know, so I think there's anything she could do that. But yeah, I think the way it ends is is nice. And she, it's again, it plays into the whole thing of finding who you are and being comfortable with who you are. And this Barbie's like, well, I'm. I don't really like doing this. It's not what I want to be. And I, what I want to be is real. Life in plastic isn't like fantastic it. at all. No, it's really not. Uh, especially with the two main characters yeah. um but yeah i i do agree that the ending is is excellent um and it, can, it is quite moving yeah um my only additional ones uh the musical sequences so the main i i'm just ken is great um also the the one where they're all uh serenading all their barbies on the guitar <laughs> Staring them down. That's great. That's great. I love it. I think that's that's also very good. Mm. Um, and that's another song that's already on the Barbie soundtrack on Spotify that I've been listening to again. So nice. top tier. Um, also, a lot of the jokes, a lot of the humour in this really landed for me. Um, and I really haven't laughed that much in a cinema for a long, long time. 
um at least consistently laugh you know i was yeah at one point i was like i'm going to throw up i'm laughing too much so <laughs> i'm going to die it. this is it <laughs> i will die i um, still have to see oppenheimer oh, i can't yeah, die here exactly. <laughs> this will be the end and that one is not joking all right oppenheimer does not have any jokes in it <laughs> don't go in there expecting laughs it would um, be a bit weird if it did <laughs> yeah um but yeah like the, the the we talked about the tall sideways wall as soon as they realize that you know we're doomed when he then just gets out and starts fighting all the kens straight after that he's like oh and just starts punching them and like throwing them it's ridiculous um when the other guy from sex education is like i have no power does that make me a woman I yeah like, that's top tier again he was really um good. The tax evasion lines from the Mattel creator was like, ah, I have tax evasion, but that's for another movie. It's like, oh, hold on a minute. Um, Helen Mir- Mirren's uh, narration when she like cuts it, she's like, look, Margot Robbie's yes. not the best person for this. You can't make Give this it. point. Is Margot Robbie? That was <laughs> yeah, great. I know. Um, Rob Brydon again showing up as the sugar daddy Ken. I think it's also another another great joke. Um, there's probably so many in there that I'm forgetting. The Godfather mansplaining. Um, yes the glasses to turn into it from a nerdy barbie to a to a sexy barbie to confuse that Ken. was amazing because you like you um, kind of cringe at it because it's like that's yeah. so true that they it's always so do cliche. that it's you are great. beautiful without your glasses <laughs> i just uh, that always makes me think of ironically the pink panther movie um mm. where <laughs> steve barty like takes off the, like his like psychic's glasses i guess so mm. you look beautiful without your glasses He's like, thank you, Inspector. And then he walks off and takes the glasses with him. And she just walks into, straight into a tree. And that <laughs> killed me as a kid. Um, so it made me think of that, which Top is always going to give it, like, um, points. Yeah, and then even, like, um, all the businessmen on roller skates, when they've got to get into the... into the, I really found that really... Just a visual gag is great. Um, and there's... Yeah, yeah, there's just so many other jokes that I, I can't think. The Zack Snyder one, I cackled at the yes, Zack Snyder one. Yes, that was great. Um, not that many people laughed in my cinema because I think it is quite an internet it's a, it's thing. A, it's an niche thing, yeah. If you're not chronically online, you're but, um, but yeah, I found it. Me and the people we were with, I found it so funny. That was um, good. And funnily enough, I haven't really seen any complaints about it yet. It's probably because those that audience are yet to go and see the film. So, yeah. so probably haven't discovered that they're. And they'll hear about it online and go and see it just so they can then complain about it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But um, yeah, Plus so many jokes. I think you know were they were all great. Um, I, yeah, something that's been it's a consistently funny film, which I don't mm. think has happened for for a while for me. And since funny enough, probably not since like you know the Nice Guys, which is another comedy that I was constantly laughing at. Maybe Bullet Train uh, last year, last year, earlier this year. Um, a similar funny yeah, vibe, but yeah, this one. This one was consistent laughs, except for when it got really hard hitting. Not even That's to good. mention oh. Ryan Gosling discovering patriarchy and horses. All of that, all of his discovery of, of that was one of my favorite lines when he was like, "Once I realized it wasn't about horses, I kind of lost interest anyway." <laughs> yeah, yeah. And when I was like, they asked me for the time, and he's got like three watches. Yes, on Yes, that was now. such that like just like physical comedy and visual gag mm. that was so good. It's, just, it's it's all it's all really good. Um, but yes, yeah, so have you have you got any other additional positives? <laughs> No, I don't know. <laughs> um, but yes, additional positives. Um, I thought it was pretty well paced. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I think it did kind of fly by. Um, considering how many characters are in like, oh yeah, you're in this. Like yeah. when um, the other guy from Sex Education, Connor Swindles, to a number, yes. oh yeah, you're in this. Um, yeah. And even like, you know, like Will Ferrell mm-hmm. that lot are in Barbie Land. But then I always kept forgetting that they were there. Like, Oh yeah, it's you. But oh, yeah. it, 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 when they sense. come out, it's just that the really like small building. They all like come out of it. It's like, what, yeah. what, are, you, what are you doing? And Will Ferrell was just there, like, oh, Ken is right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like that character, and that's a shout out I want to give actually. Um, if it's not Elf, I don't really find Will Ferrell very funny, but he uh, killed me in this. He was really, really good. So I, think I want to shout this out. And, this and Anchorman, I think, are his best comedic performances. Yeah, yeah I haven't seen Anchorman. Anchorman, Anchorman, is, Anchorman is excellent. If you like this one, I think you would like. You like okay. Man. It's similar. It's similar, similar comedy. To be fair, in both yeah. of these films, um, and they're both very good. Interesting. Um, so yeah, he was great. And um, I, I think I've seen a lot of talk about America Ferreira's big speech, mm-hmm. a big monologue. Um, mm-hmm. But I thought that was really well done yeah. as well. Um, very yeah. powerful. Um, and I, I could kind of feel the energy in the room of people being quite captured by that, considering yeah. they're a pretty shit audience. I did like that they seemed a bit. Like, yeah, of course, one of the shitty the... teenagers was like, "Ugh, fuck off." Was um, it a male teenager or a female? You'll teenager? be surprised, though, that it was a male teenager. Yes. Oh, there um, we go. Whenever they mention like 
you know, women are like this, and they're like, mm. Mm. why are you watching yeah. this dressed in pink and everything? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's that's I think that's what not for you. About. <laughs> yeah, literally, everyone's criticised that sequence because everyone that has criticised it has mainly been male. Um, yeah. They're not saying we're bad, folks. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's fine. Yeah, it's not. It's not the men that's the problem. It's the system. How it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, yes. But yeah, I, I thought that was a really you know very well written speech and very well performed mm. by uh, America Ferrer as well, who I haven't seen in a lot. Um, no. I remember her from the Ugly Betty days because my sister loved that show. Um, I don't think I've seen her in anything since that. Yeah, I think she was, um, she was really most good. recently in. She was most recently in Superstore, which is the sort of sitcom. Yes, I've seen that two episodes of that. I need to get back into that. Yeah, yeah, I've just only seen a few as well, but that's where I recognise her from. Um, but yes, uh, positives all round, um, and we've been talking about the film, all the positives for so long, but sadly we must now move on to the negatives, um, which uh, we pulled together a few. Mm-hmm. Uh, mine, you know, I really struggle with my third one, but anyway, um, my first sort of negative is as much as Will Ferrell is good, I don't think he needs to be in the movie. No, uh, you're right. And, and uh, Will Ferrell and Mattel, I don't think that needs to be there. Um, yeah, they could just have them go find the girl, be like, oh my god, everything's shit, and then Ken be like, oh my god, patriarchy, and then they just go back and then yeah, can cut it out. And yeah. maybe that loses 20 minutes and loses that. But yeah, but then we lose like... the gag of him trying to get out the gate. <laughs> well, he, yeah. he just throws he looks it. so not... pained when he throws it. He's like, oh, we didn't need it. <laughs> oh, we're never going to catch Barbie. Oh, we didn't need it. Oh, she's gone. So good. Yeah, it's, I mean, you know, that's what I mean. It's, it's good. And the scenes that are in it are good. If it was I like don't think that they need three to hours be, long and they'd have those scenes, they would have been like, oh. But since mm. it's a short film, I guess, like. I yeah, kind of, I'm okay with it. Yeah, yeah, and it adds a bit more slapstick comedy. It makes the real world a little bit more fun, especially after they've been the uh, just depression central with Barbie and, yeah. and the girl. Um, so yeah, I do, I do appreciate that, but I don't think they necessarily. That was another thing it. I loved. Just on the topic, I just keep mm. thinking of random things. Um, like yeah. halfway through the film, and it's just like the advert for depression Barbie. That <laughs> yeah, me yeah. As well. yeah. She's it's eating great. a whole bag of whatever it was, like Starburst. She's watching Pride and Prejudice from, the, from 1997. <laughs> amazing oh it is good um but yeah i don't i don't think he was in it but again i can i can look for it because he does add some good stuff there but from a plot perspective you don't you don't, yeah, you don't need him no. um so what's your first negative um i just wanted to see more of the other barbies and kens um, yeah I that's think kind, it's kind of my second one as well yeah. i know they kind of need to have it be like a focused story so you kind of mm-hmm. only really can't have it about but i do think it's a shame you know, especially with the marketing relying so heavily on all the Barbies and all this the kids. Is a, this is this and is film yeah, about this is kind Barbie, of yeah. being like, you know, you can be whoever you want to be and everything like that. I'm like, we don't even know the other Barbies and Kent. So do we really yeah. care about who they think they should be? Um, because mm. it's a little piece that we do get of them are really fun. And you know, I, I am kind of glad about the third act kind of really highlighting the other Barbies when they all kind of like get out of the brainwashing and yeah. come up with this plan together. So they did have that. I think probably the other Kens were a bit more shafted than the other Barbies were. Um mm. But that's also the Doctor Who fan of me being like, I want more shooting up. Yeah, um, yeah, I knew as soon as I was watching that film, I was like, Doctor Who fans aren't going to be happy because he's not in it much. No, <laughs> and I think I did like see someone lines. on Twitter being like, oh, I wish he had more. And I was like, um, yeah. Not, not... And I dare say Simu Liu's Ken was Loki, my favourite. So I wanted to see more of him, <laughs> but he did get a decent mm-hmm. amount to do as well. Um, but I just love how yeah. petty he was um, with, yeah. you know, Ryan Gosling's Ken and everything. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, I can understand from like, a linear plot driven film perspective that they can't just have loads of people fighting for the screen time yeah. but it is kind of a shame like maybe if they got rid of the Mattel stuff you could have seen more of the yeah. other Barbies and Kens um, and that's just a testament to the cast being as good as they are in those limited bits we get of them um, so yeah it's a shame you know at least they all do get like a moment of themselves to shine um, but I, I kind of wish we got more yeah i think that's fair um yeah my second one is just undeveloped side characters so it's a little bit of connor swindell's character as well he's mm-hmm. he's got some great lines when he has those lines but you don't really see much of him i thought the impression i got of him and the other guys in there was that they were all kens as well they just were employees yeah, there they were um, the same and dress maybe and maybe that's like maybe that's the implication maybe that's what they wanted to and if they had like a longer cut or whatever they would have put that in um which adds a more sinister level to the Mattel stuff and maybe warrants it being in there a little bit more. That was the St. John 
the shower vibes. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, I think I could have done with a little bit more. And yeah, especially with the Kens, a lot of people, you know, that, that we see online would have gone in thinking like, oh yeah, I'm going to see Shooty Gatwa on the big screen. And he does have some good, like, like he has some lines in there and he's a great presence. He's, you know, he's one of like the main three or four Kens. Um, and, but, and to be fair to me, I was, every time he was like on the screen, I was like, oh, there he is. And I'd watch his facial expressions and see that. And yeah. I was like, oh, you know, he's given his all in it. Yeah, if um, you're if you're hoping for more of him than any of the stuff in the trailers, then you will be disappointed. Yes, yeah, I think he gets at least from the trailers I saw, he gets like one nice little scene where they're like sat on their little balconies on on the little Ken houses. I think it's him, Ryan, yeah. and uh, uh, Secret Invasion Secret guy. Secret Invasion guy. <laughs> King, I feel Kingsley. bad for not, um, something King sees in it. Yeah. Yeah. So those three, I think they they were great there. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just the the implication is that. All the Kens are the same, so you don't really need to spend too much time on them. Whereas all the Barbies yeah. have different job roles, and they do do a little bit more of introducing the different the different job roles they do. Mm. But at the same Kingsley, time, Kingsley yeah, Ben not... Adir. So I just need to yes, think of Ben Kingsley it. and then just swap the names around. Reverse it, um, yeah. And also shout out to him for when he's being sick, <laughs> when they all see Barbies. But he's, like, oh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, he's like, sorry, that was great. <laughs> yeah, it's it, excellent. You know, the, the moments they have are great, but yeah, they are. Yeah. They're definitely more side characters that come in and put little bits in rather than it being an yeah. ensemble. It's definitely more the two inside. That's um, why we need a sequel. Uh, yes, I'll take a sequel. Um, so what's your second second negative? Your second negative? Yes. Um, <laughs> I don't know really how to explain this one or even phrase mm -hmm. it. I've kind of put Barbiness. Okay. Now, this is a very weird Is it too, girl is it too girly for you, Liam? No, look at me. Of course it's not. Um, <laughs> listen, I relate to Barbie more than Ken. <laughs> Maybe yeah, after fair, the yeah. year I've had, um, <laughs> I'm rubbish at everything too, Barbie. Don't worry. Um, but yeah, I, I think I was okay with that, that. You know, when they're like establishing what Barbie land is like, I knew yeah. I was going to cringe my way through that. Um, mm. And I was like, it's fine because they need to set this up because I know it's going to take the twist a bit later on and it's going to get quite real. Yeah. Um, but then I feel like that feeling just never went away in some of those bits. Mm -hmm. um, so I was just kind of like, oh, you know, it, it felt a bit, oh, I don't want to disrespect the Hallmark channel. But it felt like a <laughs> yeah. Hallmark original movie, okay. mm -hmm. particularly when it was like, I'm just Ken and he's going down the slide and everyone's happy. I'm, I'm, I'm there, yeah. but like, mm -hmm. you know, but that's a personal thing, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I guess cheesiness in a way, but it's because, you know it's going to get quite real and it does get that yeah but then i feel like once it makes that twist it then keeps maybe going it's, back and forth when i thought it bit, was going to stick yeah you, you're the, the bit you're thinking about is your it's probably a fear that this is just gonna be a cliche like barbie movie yeah. and not be that deep and yeah. to start with that's what you kind of think yeah and then i i i think i wanted them to once it, they'd got away from that to just stay away from that but they mm. don't which is fine because it makes sense but i also then couldn't quite get past it i guess yeah okay but, you know, that's, personal it's, taste. it's very vague but makes sense i get what you mean yeah <laughs> basically yeah i'm too old and i'm not the target audience <laughs> no i'm trying to say. you're not yeah you're not you're not you're not a, shocking you're not as it a, may be uh, looking at me no you're not a, you're not a female between the ages of 13 and 30 so you're probably not the target demographic no. sorry next time um but yeah, I mean, I do get what you mean. I think there are elements of it depends what you're going in for and what you're expecting. I was kind of expecting yeah. it all to be like that, similar to the Lego movie where it's all like in that world. So I was more accepting, I think, of it and sort of being like, yeah, well, it's a Barbie film, so it's going to be set in Barbie land. You know, probably. Yeah, it just depends um, how the marketing affects you, doesn't it, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I think you can't so. say it didn't market it well because that shit's no. So yeah, oh, yeah this yeah, is why I'm keen to watch it again so I can kind of really get a sense of it. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. Um, my final negative, and this was a real nitpick because it doesn't really impact the film or me at all, but um, the Barbie World song that they've made for it. Okay. Um, the Nicki Minaj and somebody else that's on it. Um, I, I don't like it. I think it's I think it's 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 bad. Um, Give it's me personal a taste, you know. You are they are credited on that song because they do a little bit of their mm. they have they like sample it. But yeah, I think they should have just, Mattel should have just humbly gone to Acra and been like, oh, sorry for trying to sue you. Do you want to be on the film? <laughs> um, 
Um, yeah. But they didn't. They wanted this instead. And again, it is personal taste. I'm just, I just don't like that music, but I just don't, especially when so much more of the soundtrack is good. I just mm-hmm. think that this one is the song that they, I think, were trying, were going to push and then realised, oh, actually, we're not, not that much, especially because it's not, the uncensored version at least isn't kid friendly. I know this film is a 12A in the UK, so it's not, you know, for kids anyway. But it just felt very out of place and very sort of not not for the film. And it just didn't. And even after watching it, I'm still like, I wouldn't put that song with this one. Mm-hmm. Do a leap of song. That works really well in it. Uh, Charlie X, C, C, X, C, X, C, X, C, X, yeah. X, C, X, that one. That song's really good in it. That one's fine. Uh, obviously, Ryan Gosling, two songs are great. Um, you know, and I think Sam Smith and Billie Eilish ones, the one right, right at the end that's used when... That was like, a depressing one. Emotional. Yeah, that and one. They take a pop song and make good. it slow and sad and it always slaps. <laughs> yeah, uh, so, that, you know, Billie Eilish ones is very, very good. Um, and I just think this one, I, I was scraping for negatives here, but I just don't think that this was one for for the film. Um, mm. But, you know, again, personal choice. If people want to listen to it, by all means, you know, it does me no harm. It's <laughs> on... <laughs> Get, yeah, yeah, get rid of it. You know, it's it's on during the credits, so I don't need to sit there and listen to it. So I can just leave, yeah. turn it off at that point. So it's fine. But I again yeah, scrape the barrel. Bye, Barbie world. Not for me. Sauce. <laughs> uh, what's your? Oh, uh, that's what Barbie said. <laughs> Bye, Barbie world. Not for me. Well. <laughs> Not for me. Thanks. So Turn true. The white void. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oppenheimer. <laughs> no. Um, so your your final negative, what have you got? Um, I feel mean. Um, <laughs> the daughter. Okay, you uh, just... the daughter. The young Gamora. Is that young Gamora? Yes, yeah, no. young Gamora. Yeah, yeah. stick to Infinity War. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, it's her plot line. I just um, mm-hmm. I felt like it was a bit half baked. I didn't buy her coming round yeah. to everything that quickly yeah um i know it's a very fast paced film and stuff but you know the bit where she like singing along in the car I'm like you don't even you, you didn't know that song 20 minutes ago and now you know all the lyrics and everything but i just i felt like that wasn't earned and maybe we needed a bit more yeah i think that's uh, maybe just a scene between them to cook that up a bit more um it just of all the plot beats that i think hit and worked really well that one was like a big swing and a miss i think for me yeah you could have taken out a bit of the the business will ferrell stuff and put in more where maybe they have a conversation in barbie world about you know because they they do kind of touch on why barbie is important to the mum but they don't really show what what changes between the girl being like oh i don't love you mum so then yeah i love you mum there's no she needed a uh when she loved me toy story 2 moment montage. yeah because they kind of had that with with Barbie and and the mum. They were kind of like, you know, there was that, oh, that recognition. But there's yeah. no sort of moment between the daughter and everything. Mm. Um, but, I mean, you can read between it. You can infer stuff. But, yeah, it would have been explicit, nice, especially because they're like supposed to be like a moody teenager. And anyone that's had any dealings with those kinds of teenagers knows that that won't be a quick turnaround. Um, yeah. in, this, in this film about a plastic doll, this is the most unrealistic bit. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> Oh God! So they don't even know how to make films for women. God, terrible. Oh. Terrible. Oh, um, but yeah, why didn't they I, make I, this I Barbie so. film for me, a man? Exactly. God, I'm just gonna. I'm, I'm, as soon as this comes out on on digital, I'm just gonna cut out all the Barbie bits and just watch the Ken parts. I'm gonna burn all my Barbie dolls. I'm gonna <laughs> buy loads of Barbie dolls and give them more money and yeah. burn it to make a point because I'm a yeah. great online influencer. That's how it works. That's how you should. That's how rational people behave. Yeah. Fully matured even, men. He even burned Ken's. I'm like, you sexist. <laughs> you trying to say? Sense. Did you even see the film? Did you understand the messaging? No, no you did not. Oh, um, have you got any other negatives? I I don't have any others. Um, um I don't think I struggle so. for my third. Um, no, I do not have any extra ones. No, I mean, you know, I I'm I'm interested to see when this comes out physically to see if there's any deleted scenes, see what they got rid of, any jokes that they they cut. Um, for any reason, if they were any better than the ones that, that well, at least the Alan done. cut, <laughs> he <laughs> yeah, has exactly. like 45 minutes of screen time. I would, you know, I, I would you, know it, you know, it exists. Give it to me. Um, but yeah, I think overall, for me, I think I, I really enjoyed this film. So, out of 10 for Barbie, what are you going to give Barbie? 10. Mm, well, uh, I figured well, 10 is what we normally do. So. Yeah, well, I, I was thinking three and a half stars, so I guess I'd say seven. Okay, fair enough. Uh, yeah, well, I was thinking. 
I'm five. thinking five stars. Well, I was thinking, I was thinking five, but it's I think that John I'm Wick thing. <laughs> I'm thinking I'm five stars. Um, yeah, I think if we're up in ten, it's probably going to be a nine point five, mm. just because I think there's yeah, again the Will Ferrell stuff. I think is a bit more like oh you know, and in my personal point, I'm more like oh come on, let's get back to Ken. Where's Ken? Let me show me Ken. Wow. Um, <laughs> I know, I know, I know it's bad, <laughs> but I can admit it's bad and acknowledge the messaging whilst not shitting on the rest of the film. So That's it's true. fine. Um, Until we stop recording, then it'll tell yeah, me how, no, no, how he hates yeah. But yeah, five, five out of five. So it's probably more like a four point, four point eight, if I'm being nitpicky about it. But nine point five out of ten. Um, I had just really had a lot of fun with it, and uh, I'm excited to go and see it again whenever that may be. Mm. Um, that's that's it then for our uh, for our first movie review. For our Doctor wow. Who review. Incredible. Weird episode Doctor um, Who this one. Quite long. <laughs> yeah, God, but, it was. Um, it was very long. You know. No, almost as long as Day of the Doctor. No, I joke, I joke. That's quite, that's quite short in comparison. Only 17 minutes. Um, but yes, that is it for this one. Uh, we'll be back with uh, other videos at a later date. Goodbye. Bye.